Hello, everyone. <laughs> We're live. Uh, Campbell and myself, myself and Campbell, out of didactic in the new now. Campbell asked me to take us into this. So, uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to everyone in chat. And, uh, you know, Campbell, uh, how many people do we have listening with us today so far? Um, we have uh, 16 at the moment. Come on. Oh, share this around, guys. Share this around. This is gonna be we'll some good content. All right. So in the face of evil, this is our topic today. So let me take us in. So evil. And if you look at the opposite of evil, you get live or live. So in the face of evil is facing whatever it is that you find evil in your life and transforming it, I would say, into something that helps you live, be happy and live in the best of all ways. So we all face evil things, whether it's evil people, let's say, or what you describe as evil. It could be an evil system, could be an evil government could be an evil uh, boss if you have one, could be evil cohorts if you're working with them, you know, could be evil siblings if, you, if you're arguing with your parents. I mean, it depends how you look at evil. And by evil, I mean not loving. Let me get right into what I describe as evil is like not healthy, not loving, not empathic, not intuitive, you know, the opposite of, of being in a happy, healthy, amazing community with loving people and how to transform that. As you can see the picture in the background, uh, you know, has uh, two, uh, you know, monsters, let's say, facing each other. So if you face the monster, what do you do with that? And how do you transform, let's say, evil into the face of living a happy life? Mm, yes, yes. And hello to everyone in chat. We're now about 55 of you watching. Thank you all yeah, for yeah, joining yeah. us. And, um, yeah, the picture, not, not that we can see it because we're in front of it, but it's, it's basically two lines, but it's like the two wolves. You know, we've all heard the, two, the story of the two wolves in your mind. One's good, one's bad. Which one wins the one that you feed? And like you said, evil is is life backwards, right? Um, the opposite to life. So, I mean, evil, you know, we have this concept that evil is out there, right? And it's other people. And, oh, if we could just change other people and stop them doing all this stuff, then we would fix, then I would fix my life if everyone else changes. But I think the only real evil that, that we sort of need to think about and that we can contend with is what's in us, right? And, and it doesn't mean, like like Renzo said, it doesn't mean you want to go around and, and you know, unlive people. But it's just, it's it's unliving yourself. Right? It's living backwards. It's taking away, you know, um, all your chances. It's short, selling yourself short. It's treating other people with the restrictions that you put on yourself. All these things are what, what really build, you know, um, a situation where people aren't living for their fullest life, which is evil, right? I say hello to Alvar Billy. It says hello, Lorenzo. And I want to comment right now on uh, what uh, James Hadaway has said, that we're living in a sim. And I, in my opinion, humbly would say a thousand percent disagree on that. You know, I think it takes away the responsibility for your life. And I think that's what a lot of uh, evil and how evil survives is when either you blame or you say there's nothing you can do. You know, there's an old saying in Japan, which, you know, I've been fighting against. And so has, uh, you know, my, my wife for a long time called Shogunai, which is nothing you can do. It's what they teach people here. And to me, that's the biggest pile of crap in the world in that you are fully responsible for everything. And as a sim, you're saying it's a simulation, meaning it's not real. But of course you're real. Your life is real. Pinch yourself, you know, go take a poop and, and put your nose in the toilet. You'll smell it, you know, uh, you know, you know, you know. Touch, touch your neighbor, have an apple, you know, yes, we're living in a multiverse, but all of this, in my humble opinion, takes you away from what you can and cannot do in relation to making your life better for yourself, in relation to facing this evil. And I would say everything you say is something that you can't have an effect on, uh, you can't have responsibility for, is the evil in your life and that you're taking your own power and giving it away and making it something that you can't use, which I would say, you know, taking the opposite of that is how to live your life and to see how you can change it so that you are in sync with what you feel would be the best way for you to be alive. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, you know, it's interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, if you're playing a game of Monopoly, and you're just focusing on, oh, I've got boards and cards and bits and that, and you're not in the game, then you're not going to get that experience, is it? So, you know, I've sort of been starting to talk about it recently is, 
Now, there's all this information we have, and we can make all these, you know, decisions and judgments of what things are. But in the end, what we really, in my opinion, should be choosing to do as far as beliefs is what, what's what's the best way to live down here? What's the best way to to enjoy it? To learn to be happy, you know. And obviously, everything energy and there's you know we don't know exactly what this place is. But yeah, if if a simulation is empowering, if you're looking at it like, well, you know, that means I can create whatever I want from, you know, I can, awesome. But if it's uh, well, it's a simulation, it's a game we're stuck. Then, yeah, I, I would give that that thought away because, you know, we, we are here. This is the thing, right? That there's this conversation of, oh, I'm so spiritual, and oh, you know, spiritual, spiritual. No one's still, no one can explain to me what that actually means. What what being spiritual is, but you know, any way we look at it, we're physical. We are the only real thing we can prove is that we're here yeah. now. We're physical and we're experiencing this. So, yeah. so, so you know, what we're trying to do, at least what I'm trying to do, is work out the, the best way to get through it, right? And that that's not like oh, we've got to struggle to get through. It. It's like how do we have fun? How do we get more of what we want? How do we, you know, empower and encourage others? And and I think that's more important than actually finding the truth, because I mean, what is the truth? I mean, I think when we get right down to it, we we probably create the, our own truths, right? And someone else can have a different truth. We know this, so yeah, it's what are we getting out of our decision? What are, what are our results, right? People have sort of stopped looking at their results. You know, this is true. true. This is true, and and, they're, and they're, their life's falling apart in the background, but they just won't let go of this truth that they've grabbed onto. But you know, if it's not doing you good, then it, it's probably doing you harm. I would say, you know, a good analogy is no matter how far you've gone down the road, if it's the wrong road for you, turn around and walk back the other way. I mean, you've gone down this road. Imagine your life is a road, if you like. You know, I feel time doesn't really go from right to left, but up and down. But if you've gone down a road, so you've created that road and you've decided that you want to, you know, it's evil. You know, put in your own six reasons why you have an evil job, your health is evil, your, someone said I have an evil sibling, you know, that's, that's another topic for another conversation. So let's say your siblings are evil or, 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 or your, your government is evil, etc. the food, the weather, whatever you want to say, you know, you have to walk back the other way. And what you're walking back when you walk through and you walk the, in the opposite direction is you're walking through yourself. Because if you take responsibility for creating your life, you have to walk back through the creations you've made. And, you know, once again, even with all the comments, I see the hardest thing for most people, and I've really almost never talked to too many, let's say, that fully understand and grasp the fact that you've got to walk back through yourself, through the choices you've made, through your belief system, through your ideas, through, through, through why you became who you are, why you're here. You know, you can even walk back to your first breath, which is called the recapitulation, and see for yourself how you made the life you've made so that you can move forward from there. Did you did mm. you ban Paul Johnston? I'm, I'm wondering. I just saying. banned Paul Johnston. Um, I just saw a few people were talking and he was, he was going off and I went back and he was basically abusing some of the mods. That was one of his first oh, comments. So really? so he's not yeah, welcome yeah. here. But, but isn't it interesting that these things happen when we're talking yeah. about these types of things? people holding on to these beliefs that they're yelling at the world and that what they're yelling is i'm right you all need to change listen yeah. to me and 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 don't they love to fall back on but i'm just trying to spread the truth and if you yeah. don't let me abuse people then you're blocking me you're censoring me yeah. come on get a life people if, if and everyone you know if you've been here any time if you're going to come on here and abuse people put people down try and make people believe what you believe then you're not welcome so goodbye paul um, but apparently Paul was was actually someone else, so it looks like it was a a, a second account. So he, he's probably been banned before. But this is the thing: he's now going to be really annoyed, and it's all my fault because I banned him. Right? He's not going to think that he's not going to see that he's come on here, pushing yeah. his stuff, trying to make everyone else change, being abusive. He's just playing the victim. But I guarantee you, he will come out and do that on someone else's channel, maybe mine, in a few days. He's going to keep pushing, even though it's making his life worse, which is exactly what we were talking about. He's grabbing onto, but I'm a truth sharer, man, and the whole system is against me because I'm trying to spread the truth. Well, really, what are your results, Paul? Your results are now you don't even get to watch this this stream. So it's interesting how these things always tend to happen when we're talking about them.
Yeah, and, and you know, I would say if we're going to look at a definition of evil, uh, like a simple one that anybody can grasp is not living your life to your highest potential. To me, that's evil. You know, you were born, you were given the gift of life. If you want to look at God or Buddha or spirit or the great cosmic soup of, of, of conflagrations and, and, and happenstance, whatever it is, you're here. For, and whatever and however you were born, you've been living 40, 50, 60 years, probably most of our viewers are at least 40, I'm guessing. And so here you are in this life. And if you're not happy for whatever reason, that's the evil. Right. Something has brought you to this point. And if you're going to point at, you know, Bill Gates or Dovis or the World Economic Forum or whoever, you know, and sure, these people are doing what they're doing. But that really in the day to day has nothing to do with your choices. In the end, you can decide how to eat. You can decide where to live. You can decide how to be. You can decide who to be with and who to spend time with. And by facing that, that's what I mean by facing evil. You can see through the system how you can become as strong as you need to be for yourself. Sure, there are cell phones. Mm. Sure, there are chemtrails. You know, sure, there's pollutions in the water. Sure, there's there's whatever, you know, weather manipulation. You know, sure, there's harp out there, et cetera, et cetera. You know, sure, there's people that have been jibby-jabbed and, and, mm. and people that are crazy in your face. And, and you got to go, who cares? <laughs> it, it's it's crazy. Like, like um, JJ Recon just um, had a good one. Many truthers just can't handle the truth. And that's, that's, <laughs> that's so, a good one, JJ. so true. <laughs> that's yeah. so true, right? Um, and I've just had a blank of what I was going to say. Um, oh, but I will mention um, evil, right, um, is at a D, we get devil. God, mm -hmm. at an O, we get good. So what we're really talking about is good and evil. But people mm -hmm. love to externalize everything. Oh, no, it's not It's not me making a bad decision. It's, it's the devil out there and all these possessed people and they're all doing this. And it's not. It's, it's, it's people making decisions, good decisions and bad decisions. That's what this all comes down to. If you start making better decisions for yourself and every, everyone else that, that impacts, things will get better. Right? Come, Which is God. If, if, you, if you, if no one has yet, go to newagora.ca. I'm going to plug our website. I don't plug it enough. Every day I put up and other people share great information, including Campbell. I just put up his, uh, his latest four videos or some of his latest four videos just this morning as well. And, you know, there's articles like The Blind Spot by I Am Sums. We have God's Gangsters by, you know, Gary Z. McZee. You know, in the body I dwell by Kingsley L. Dennis, you know, Vernon Howard, The Secrets of Life. And the reason I mention these uh, lovely people and these interesting people is not all of them agree on everything. And there's no doubt about that. You know, they all have, some of them have wildly different perspectives. But the one perspective they do agree on is that you can take responsibility in one way or another for what you need to do for yourself. And the reason I mention all of these wildly different perspectives is we're all different. Everyone's unique. Everyone's lived their own life. You know, what works for me is my truth. That's why I don't even believe in truthers. Might not be true for Campbell, might not be true for you, might not be true for anybody, but it doesn't matter. You know, you, you know you're wasting your time, as Campbell said, when you're trying to make people agree with you. I mean, what is the truth movement? What does truth mean? It, it's, it's a bunch of poo, in my opinion, because there is no it's truth. It's a label, right? You know, everything is true and nothing is true. You're breathing. That's true. You're alive. That's true. Probably you'll be dead one day. I would say that's also true. These are things most people can't really argue with. And if you take those truths and you drop the rest, you know, then you can see for yourself how you've been living in evil, listening to the devil. It could just simply be those negative voices that tell you you can't, you're not good enough, you shouldn't, you mustn't, it's too late. You know, all of those things that say, and give you very good reasons why you can't be happy. They're amazing reasons, mostly. And, yeah. You know. Oh, dude! If you want to raise it, the universe will supply them. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. <laughs> that's is, this is the thing, right? Um, yeah, like we, we all create everything. And I was going to say before, did I say it before? Um, you know, truth is love to talk about. We can manifest anything we want. We can manifest everything. Oh, but the the, trend, the chemtrails, they are going to kill me? This is going to kill me. That's going to kill me. They're doing the manifest something different. People, like, well, I don't even understand what that any of that means. It, it's so it's so interesting that people people love labels. I'm a truther, you know. Like we saw, I'm a truther. That's why everyone hates me and they want to, you know, block yeah. me and stop stop me getting my truth out because I'm a truth. I mean, I, I I really don't like labels. 
because no. that they're they're a box. A label is a box. We see it all the time, you know, with people like vegans, right? Classic, like you don't just become a vegan and change your diet. For ninety nine percent of them, it change that you've got to wear the right clothes and color your hair the right hair and do the right, you know, like there's this whole thing, you know, with sports. Mm. There's this whole, you know, because you you've agreed that you're some something outside of you, but you know, all, all you can ever be is something inside of you and you can put that out so you know we yeah. talk about this a lot but but you know everything comes from inside like if, you, if you're trying to use the outside as um uh what, how do i say it? like a reference to who you are i think you've kind of lost you've lost the whole point because for starters the things outside of us they're, they're already in the past right everything's created twice it's first created as a thought so whatever's outside of you has been thought and then created. So it's already old news, right? <laughs> Why not create something different from you and put it out to the world? Get feedback. You know, it's a Taurus, right? Out, in, out, breathing, the sine wave. It's all the same thing. It's yep. movement. It's it's life. So um, yep. it's all your fault, people. So if, it's, if, it, if, it, if it is all your fault, get something that's really good to be your fault. You know, like don't make it your fault that, that you're broke and unhappy. Make it your your fault that you, you're rich and happy, and you travel the world, and you've got the best partner ever. Make that your fault, because that that that's the choice we have. And just to reiterate, all this good and evil, it, it's us. It's us and the choices we make. They make our lives better or worse. They put good or evil out into the world around us. It's not all these people that you know these figures out there. And even if it is, how are you going to deal with that? You know, let's stick to things we can deal with and change or else we're, we're hopelessly lost, right? And keep in mind, I would say you create your day-to-day -day not by what you say or by what you think, but how you are and what you do. The world hears actions. You know, the world doesn't hear your thoughts in the way that, I mean, you can think about anything. I think about crazy things all the time, but I don't bring it into reality. That's all they are. You know, are crazy thoughts, you know, that like you should kill that person because they've been mean to you or, oh, my goodness, you've had a hard day. So you should indulge in something or it's time to get angry. But if you don't bring it into reality by not acting in the anger, by not acting in the thoughts, uh, it doesn't become real. It doesn't become part of your life or what you're living. You know, the same is true as if your life isn't the way you think it should be. And you're saying, but I'm such a good person and I bake cakes and I, and I, and you know, and I share my bananas with the lady next door. And I'm always telling the children how beautiful they are. And I don't understand why my life, you know, sucks for this reason. That's a good time to sit down, to take stock, to go back through yourself and to see maybe how your actions are not reflecting yet the kind of life you would like to live. And in other words, mm. that if you're having a poor life, your life is reflecting your actions, not what you're thinking and not what you're saying, but how you're being. And Campbell and I have come mm. across lots of people, even talking about some before we got on, that say many things that do many, you know, but their actions are the exact opposite of what they say they're doing. And that's why their life is hard. That's why they're sick. That's why they don't have enough according to what they need. And that's why, mm. you know, we always say it's all your fault and figure it out going backwards from there. And then you can figure out how to make it all your fault in a wonderful way. Yeah, that's why that's why it's all your fault is so empowering. I mean, you know, the only people who don't like that statement are the people who don't like their lives. But it's so empowering because once you realize it is all your fault, guess what? You can change it. If it's someone else's fault, you can't change it. Can you? Like you, have, you can't. We know you can't change other people. So if it's someone else's fault, you're stuffed. Race over. You may as well give up. I wonder but if that's if the all your that's fault. True. Oh, sorry. Here you go. I just see Mr. One to One that says, I'm having an out of money experience. And I saw that on a t shirt. <laughs> it's, really, it's really funny that there was a guy in the Australian Gold Hunters or Australian Gold, whatever. I used to watch that show. And there was one guy that was wearing that t shirt on the show all the time. I'm having an out of money experience. And I was thinking to myself, why in heaven's name is this fellow wearing a t shirt, telling the world he's got no money like, when he's out yeah. hunting for money? And, you know, those two people never came back. They lost their shirts, they never found the gold lost they were looking for. It. And they lost all their money simply because he was telling the world quite literally by walking around in a t-shirt saying he has no money while he's looking right. for money. And, and it made no, you know, so it's, I wonder if you're that fellow, Be, Mr. One to One, or you saw it. <laughs> if that's you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I mean, be so careful of your self-talk. It's kind of one yeah. of the first things that they talk about, you know, in, you know, this self-help or whatever you want to call it. But but people just don't really take that to heart, do they? Like, I literally won't won't say things like there's anything that's like that. I, I wouldn't. Not I'm not interested, man. I, I'm not because it's all affirmations. And it's same yeah. with songs, right? Pe people, this is why they use so much in pop music and, and lyrics because they get you singing the lyrics over and over. That's an affirmation, right? Just because it's not called an affirmation doesn't. It's it's programming. So so program yourself, you know, to, to do something good. Um, yeah. Again, I, I, I've and, gone and sideways, I see something, so you can talk. <laughs> I see that thing, Kim. It, you know, uh, he didn't tell us to do and manifest what makes us feel good. Sounds as do as the will. I mean, first off, nobody really knows what God said, anyways, or what Spirit said. You know, it's all it's all somebody saying somebody said something, something, something. I know anybody was sitting on God's knee, and God said, "Hey, tell everyone this." But on the other hand, maybe we're all sitting in spirits or God's knee, and and, and Spirit and God is whispering to all of us, you know, the light of what we decide to do or the life that we decide to live, and maybe it's backwards too. That's why we have the reflection here: not do as thou will, but will as thou wish they would do. In other words, use your will. And your patience, the Toltecs say that, that they use their will and their patience mm. to create the life they want to live. You, oh, know, yeah, was, uh, will, mm. you know, will will power, strong in will. Yeah. I will yeah, yeah. do it or I won't do it. I mean, you don't want to yeah, take yeah. the devil. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, that's obviously coming from Crowley, you know, do us out some yeah. work. And oh my God, Crowley is so evil and all this. But, but, you know, really, I mean, out of all the people you hear say Alistair Crowley's evil, ask them who he was and what he did. They, they, they don't normally have that. They, they're normally just chanting, "Oh, he's evil," because I heard someone say it. But I was going to say, if you're a really nice person and everything you do comes from your heart and you want to help others, why wouldn't you do as you as you will? Yeah. Why wouldn't you make your will come true? It's only bad if you're an evil bugger who's trying to, you know, suppress people. If, if you're coming from the opposite perspective, it's a good thing. So, so all, you know, all these things, all these mantras that we get, and, and like, do they even mean anything? You know, because people, you know, love to chant things and this and this, and, but most of the time it's just something that, that they've heard, like the um, the procession, procession of the equinox. You know, I used to, you know, think that, oh, yeah, everything's, you know, ages and all this because I'd seen all this information. And then when 2020 came around and it's, oh, we're moving into the age of Aquarius, I realised, hang on, can I even, what is this procession? Like, I don't, what is it? You know, I've been taught, I've been mentioning it, but I don't really know what it is. So I st started doing a bit of research. Couldn't really find any, anyone explaining what it is. I, I spoke to different um, astrologers and that, you know, what is this procession? When's the date? When does everything change? Yeah. No one could tell me. So yeah, that was yeah. a belief I, I had that I thought was real. But now that I actually stop and look at it, it's just a concept that I took on. I can't prove if that's true or not. Yeah, there might not even be any planets to have astrology from. I heard they're just energy, you know, floating bits of energy. Maybe there are other beings in the sky looking down. Maybe we're, you know, in a dome. Maybe we're on a plane. I, I don't know. Maybe they're just watchers. Now, you know, and Guy, I, I'm not even sure you're a real guy, Guy, you know, saying, you know, that Aleister Crowley was the wickedest man in the world. How do you know? And I, first off, I would doubt that. And second off, who's well, defending anybody? You know, Campbell wasn't defending anybody. He was saying basically everyone can do what's what defending they, him <laughs> yeah he's, anyone he's, can do anyone can do would, what they need to do that's how it. did you get that yeah guys seriously like how did I, you I, get he, me defending alistair did, crowley uh, out of what i just said so yeah he's you know so a, uh, he's probably a, a shill because what it really <laughs> what it really comes from is that even if he's a bad man let's say he's the worst man in the world how do you know he's not here to do that job just to show other people don't do that not to be evil right to not to be evil you know, how, how do you know? You look at people like, I've met some people that I can't stand, even over the last few months, Campbell and I've talked about it, that are showing me how not to be alive. And they've been the biggest help. You know, my, my wife, again, she loves when I mention her on these. Actually, she doesn't. So that's why I keep doing it. But she, hi, GA. she has asked me, why am I laughing all the time? Why are you one of the happiest people I've ever met? Like, how can you be, you know, this guy that gets up in the morning mostly, unless I don't, Funny. I'm laughing all day long. And it's because, you know, I'm watching these people that maybe have more money than me or more land or more whatever's, you know, more cars. And uh, they're showing me, you know, how not to be alive. And by taking that and turning and going the other way, like if you want to sharpen a knife, you, you don't want to sharpen it on rubber, right? You sharpen it on a strong rock that doesn't move on. So you sharpen yourself on these evil people, on these bad people, on these silly people, on these lost people, on these indulgent people by, by 
allowing them to show you how not to be. And then they're mm. doing it. Uh, they're doing, they've done a better job for me than all the beautiful people that have told me how to be fantastic. Because for some reason mm. that gets into my guts and really makes yeah. me go, oh, that's what that looks like. Mm, not, a, not a pretty face. I think I won't do that. It, it's so true. You can learn just as much or if not more of, of how not to live, of how to do things wrong and go, oh, I don't want to go there. Um, so you can. And, and, you know, with figures, you know, like Alistair Crowley, he, he was dead before most of us were born. Okay. Mm. I spend a lot of time going through history and going, hey, look, it's all, it's all a story. It's all crap. How do we know, how do we know he's not the same? Like we don't know, but, but the thing is, him and his doctrine live on through everyone talking about him. If everyone forgot him and what an idiot, you know, that then he's got no influence at all. Um, and as, as clearly, I mean, clearly he's not the most evil person to live. You know, if we go through the stories, you know, Mussolini, you know, the, the H-Man, Alexander the Great, you know, like the Crusades, you know, the, the church, I mean, come on, come on. That's just another catchphrase that people throw around and they don't really know the meaning to it. So I think the more the more we know what we're saying, it can make us more precise in our words, which are spells that we're casting. So the more that we get real our, with ourselves, I think the more that we start to get what we want, you know, because the mind does spend its time trying getting you to focus and getting you what you want. But if you're not telling it, if you're telling it tales and you're not telling it what you, how can it do its job? Well, so, Mr. so that's One, the biggest thing is get real with yourself. Yeah. Mr. One to one, if you spend ridiculous amounts of money over the years, I suggest spend ridiculous amounts helping us get good information out. You know, uh, you know, these yes, people that say, us. yeah, give it to us get, or give it to a good thing. You know, if you do the opposite. So uh, are you ridiculously rich? Do something ridiculously good with the energy when you've done something ridiculously bad. Money's not a root of anything. It's your actions and your desires and the way you've been that will, you know, hamper, hinder or move you forward. And, you know, I'm going to dare everyone on this, uh, you know, on this chat to say one way they're bad, one way they've been evil. Like everyone's talking still outside themselves. Yesterday, I'll start. I got angry with my wife over something silly, over something ridiculous, and you know, and 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 I I lost my temper for ten or fifteen minutes with someone who loves me very much and spends her life trying to help me have a better life. And at the end, I felt like an idiot because I said, "What am I doing?" You know, I just didn't sleep. I was up early. I had lots of reasons. Didn't sleep very well. I got up early. Uh, an interview got cancelled on me. You know, I was up at two thirty. Blah blah blah. So I was a little irritated, and then I got irritated on someone that loved me. So I was evil mm. because I brought evil energy or not loving energy into the world. And then I learned from that. So the next time that voices get angry or get upset with someone you like or someone you love, I will have a little bit more distance so that I won't do that. Right. And that's what I mean by having to walk back through yourself. You see how you have created the world around you and how that can change by you uncreating certain habits that haven't worked well for you according to your own definition of what's good and bad for you in your life. Yeah, and, and again, that's the place of power. If everything, you know, is someone else outside of you, you know, destroying your life, well, what can you ever do? You, you can't do anything. But if you take it, you know, I created all of this. Why did I create all of this? Oh, my God, I think I want to create something different. Then you're moving forward, right? So, uh, yeah, you know, we do see it a lot that, you know, and – this is not against any any particular person, but people love to just grab onto these concepts because what they do essentially is they stop you looking at your own demons, right? If you're a truther and you're out there and you're just trying to save the world and, oh, my God, the world's so hard and they keep censoring me, oh my, but I'm just trying to get the yeah. truth out, that's what you're going to focus on. And that that's just your mind, the great trickster, that's mm. a way to not focus on what you really need to focus on, on going forward, because we see this, right? These people, they can be in that loop for decades, if you mm. know, definitely years, months. Let's keep going. Nothing ever changes. Well, most of the time they actually start creating what they're talking about, the bad they talk about. So it goes down, right? But but this is, you know, the thing. It, it's it, You've just got to get real with yourself. You've got to understand that, Yes, it's your fault, and yes, your your mind is going to try and stop you looking at the monsters, because as how, we said, good and evil—they're yeah. just thoughts inside. We create the monsters, 
there's no no force out there throwing monsters at us and even if they are you still have to say okay i accept that you've just given me a monster i'll, I'll now give it some energy you know, i mean come well, on this is all decisions has anyone ever thought that maybe these bad ideas and this came to me from a friend of mine recently so i can't take credit for it that you know when a body dies the maggots come and eat it Right, so it's dead and it helps the world by decomposing it. Has anyone ever thought that, you know, these so-called monsters that attack you are attacking dead life, dead energy, you know, dead ways to be alive? Do you think you're here to earn just money or do you think you're here to sit in your house and drive your car? I mean, maybe your life is dead or parts of your life are dead. I could say that and need to be necrotically looked after so that you can be alive. Right. So if you're being attacked or you're in a way that things aren't helpful for you, or you're working with people, let's say, that aren't nice or are or, or, or not loving, maybe they're trying to f force you to look at a place that needs to be amputated. I've had to have lots of bad stuff in my life amputated. I've had to have lots of bad ways to be alive, you know, let go or killed or let starve to death simply because it wasn't serving me and making my life the way I would like it to be. You know, so all thoughts aren't evil. They can't be. They're just thoughts. You know, it, you know, a thought is good, a thought is bad. It depends. Where does, is it my thought? I'm thinking good things right now. I don't think that was evil. Sometimes I think thoughts do bounce into me from evil sources. Mm. You know, what I do with them, though, as we've said a hundred times already in this uh, this chat, it's up to you what you it's, do with your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there is that, that saying or that concept that, you know, just thinking bad is, is bad. But really, like we just had a talk about, you know, apparently the most evil man in the world, Alistair Crowley, and, and we decided that, you know, that we've actually got power and we should be doing the right thing. So we just thought about potentially a bad thought and had a good outcome. It's not the thoughts, it's yeah. the actions. People are what they do, not what they say. Like simple. Sim yeah. Most of this, most of life is simple if you just cut it down it's and so cut simple. out the BS. It's so simple. Like... If someone's telling you they're going to do this and this and this and this and you know if someone's telling you i'm oh, i'll show you how we make a million dollars in the next six months oh man we're going to do this and you look at their life and they're broke and living in a shack why would you believe them because people are what they do not what they say okay if, if that's someone who's a millionaire they're not going to be running up to you going i can show you how to make millions to be just like me but no you can go up to them and go hey man you look uh, like you're pretty happy. Isn't it? Got any pointers? Yeah. And, and this is the thing. So don't believe what people say just because they say it. Words are cheap. It's so easy to say stuff, right? Yeah. So easy. But, so easy. Like but Mr. people Mr. who do things, that's a whole different level. Like Mr. One to One who spent all his millions, you know, his last comment was all his money's in a trust fund. He can't touch it. You know, of course it is. <laughs> you know, you know, when he says he spent millions, <laughs> he says he spent millions on bad things. And so that's why life is horrible. And then when I suggest he spends his millions on something good, suddenly he can't do that. And there is his but. The but is it's in a trust fund, right? I'm not saying it's not true because maybe it is. You can do bad things with good intentions. You know, it, you, I think Mr. One to One's not a real person because he keeps arguing in circles. Because, you, you know, you bad things bad and things good things good with good intentions doesn't mean anything, right? It really doesn't mean uh, it. What's a bad uh, thing? What's a good thing? Mr. Campbell wants to take this. Go ahead. I was just going to say, it, it's it's got... The only thing that matters is the intention. Like, act, you know, accidents happen. Like, if you if you're intending to help someone and something doesn't turn out the way you expected it, it doesn't mean that that's bad and that makes you evil. What it probably means is a person that you're, you know, trying to help or interact with has a bigger lesson to learn, right? So it's for them. I mean, it's intention. If you in even if you intend to do evil and it doesn't happen if you go and set a bomb off and to blow people up and a bomb doesn't go off it doesn't mean that oh now you're good yeah. no it's the intention that is the problem it's what you're trying to do so intent, you know the yeah, whole yeah, thing yeah. of oh my god bad things with good intent you know you can do bad things with good intentions no that that's that's not true at all L less than perfect things can happen if you're if you've got good intentions sure and that's but, showing you a but good, can you probably. create bad no <laughs> because to create bad you have to intend bad everything is energy so no mr wonder one i think i think somebody said uh loop and i, and I agree sage sent loop and, and i think in that one word she probably described it very well i think the monsters or the demons or the devils they put you between two mirrors right? and a lot of yeah. these people you talk to that don't get you anywhere they argue in circles 
then then you literally you get dizzy and you lose your energy and then you don't go anywhere and then they've won right because if you're trying to go to a good place the, the the devil doesn't have to make you do something bad to stop you from doing something you know to doing something good the devil just has to keep you confused right and puts a mirror in front it's... of you the ego the echo and so you're sitting there and then you're arguing in circles and at the end of it you're tired and dizzy and basically you're still on your couch <laughs> And, yeah. and and that's all it takes. A lot of people have missed this point. That's why it's important to understand yourself, right? Because then you see how not to get stuck in that ego echo chamber and to get beyond it. And that gives you an opportunity to get beyond evil because that's all evil has to do is distract you. And I strongly feel this life is just a big distraction and then you die and then evil wins. Yeah, yeah. Um, all evil wants is, is your attention, right? where energy well where focus goes energy flows that, that's the same as a troll a troll you know we've all seen them on youtube and that um all they want is your attention and th so this is the thing when there's evil and stuff that you perceive as evil so therefore bad for your life you don't have to get in there and, and change their minds you don't have to go and give that give it attention you can just actually walk away and and then it, guess what it's no longer a part of your existence or reality but so many people, they won't do it. They've got to go back and fight because they're doing the good yeah. thing and they're fighting for good and ah, and then they come out a year later broken because yeah, you can't win it because evil is sitting there laughing, going, give me more energy, give me more, yeah, you can't. give me more. You like, can't let's win. See, Leo Dimio Coffee says, humans are completely surrounded by demonic entities. We live in hell. Most people wear rose-colored glasses. So what are you doing about it, Lee? I don't know if Lee's a man or a woman. That could go either way. But what are you doing about it? Okay, so you see you're living in a world of hell, let's say. I've kind of seen that too. I do think we're surrounded by, you know, demonic entities. I see them, so they're not totally unseen. That's already not true for me anyways. I see them all the time. Uh, so what are you doing about it? So you're bla basically blaming people. Most people wear rose-colored glasses. So what? What's that got to do with anything? What are you doing about that statement? What is your action? Mm. How, are, how have you done the same thing? How are you helping with that comment or how are you just distracting giving people a sense of hopelessness oh my goodness we live in hell and most people are too stupid to notice mm. uh, poor little you poor, poor me rose colored glasses you're just pretending to yourself that things are good but He's a ghost again, Who cares? it'd be yeah. interesting like do, do you believe that, that everything's energy and we're creators because if there's ghosts out there then that to me that's energy on a different frequency right that we can't sure connect with physically so that means that that we can change anything you know like rose colored glasses just means that you're you're seeing the best in the world you're seeing opportunities you're seeing solutions and guess what that equals if, if you put that into action that actually equals solutions and better things so i, I hate statements like that like oh rose colored glasses and and you know i've heard these my whole life but and, and when people have a positive attitude and they want to see the best and they want to create something good so many people will come out oh you're just you know rose colored i mean there's a million statements that that basically say that same thing you've missed so the that, point it's that's all what like I, wonder. I said before it's all action what you do Sorry. Yeah, i wonder about you leo that you're saying we all have to be educated to the same truths have you been listening to this chat at all or are you just coming out of or are you just coming out of left field to to add a lot of bullshit to the chat i would say my second suggestion is probably more true there's people that don't pay attention to what's being said and just keep throwing poo in the punch bowl. You know, that's why I won't drink for the punch bowl. I don't think they're real or they're obtuse no. or well, they're both. Mm. Because, you know, we, we I said mention something that you're doing and you keep throwing more BS. So I'm giving you a little bit of attention here, which I'm going to stop after this one because I really don't think you're real because there is no same truth for all of us. And that's something that keeps most people in jail is that everyone's got to believe this for the world to know. You move, the next person moves. Everyone moves by themselves. Everyone has to move by themselves. And then the world, at least your world, will be in a better place. Mm. Yeah, yeah. If your life is dependent on, on what other people around you do, then, again, you, you've lost. You haven't even hit the start, the start line. Like, you can't, you can't, you, you're just, you're a victim completely. It's just like that statement, right? We're in hell. We just can't see it. It's all so bad. Well, if you believe that, your world will be hell and you're a victim and you're succumbing to it you know so it, it's it, it's a lot easier to stay with the crowd and you just throw your hands up and go it's not my fault to not take responsibility which is really what all of this is right it's not my fault my life sucks 
it's not my fault yeah. this stuff keeps happening to me. It's everything out there that I can't control, which is saying what? I'm a victim. I can't change it. So if you want to live there, that's your choice. You have, you're have, you allowed to, 100%. You're allowed to. What you're not allowed to do is pass that crappy mindset onto other people, right? I mean, you're allowed to, but you shouldn't. And anyone, pay, like, it, you know, comments like that should be just a big sign saying yep. turn around and run away because <laughs> they, they can, they, they've got nothing for you but to spiral you down. Yeah. That's it. That's it, right? So Leo's definitely proven himself to be a bot, in my opinion. Uh, what I would say, you know, looking at this is, you know, I love Vernon Howard. Like, yeah. you know, he's not he's not with us anymore. And something he shared with me, which I think is the best for when people share stuff like this, is to go around with something in your heart that says, I have nothing to say to that. Right? So if someone comes up with a bad idea or starts arguing with you or starts telling you you're bad, you don't even have to say that out loud. It just distances you from an argument or a conversation, like Campbell said, people want to, you know, make you feel bad. Misery loves company, as they say. So if he's real, he's real. If he's not, he's not. But uh, the bottom line really is, if you don't allow others and their opinions to bring you down, however that works for you, and you can move yourself to a place of seeing in your heart, in your guts, in your soul, what you would like to make real, then I would say, you're living the opposite of evil. You're facing it and you're learning to live the life that you would like to see created. Mm. Yeah, it takes courage to, to stand up for your convictions, to stand apart from the crowd, to, to say, look, yes, I acknowledge there's a lot of crap going on, but I'm going a different direction. I want to mm. make a change for the better. I want to be on my deathbed going, well, even if I didn't make a change, at least I tried, right? Like, like that, that's a different decision to, to then you know, like going into a crowd and like, oh, yeah, I know, it's so bad. I mean, God, look what they're doing, spraying the sky, putting up the price. Oh, my God, it's evil people, the children. Oh, my God, they're going to do this. Well, I mean, and, and the thing is, even if that's true, if you focus on it, you're just going to have a bad time going through life, right? You can mm. still focus on good things and things that you can change. And this is another thing we've, we've talked about before is, if you can't change it, or especially if you're not and you're not prepared to change something, stop talking about it. Either do something or shut up. All this stuff about, oh my, and, and obviously the, the children was a big one, but everything, the tunnels, the the whatever, right? Whatever, you know, what you want to pick up. Pop music so bad, the government, the schooling system. Seriously, if that's a problem for you and you feel strongly about it, again, right? People are what they do, not what they say. So do something about it or otherwise yep. shut up because all you're doing is trying to add that to other people's worries, getting them to focus on bad things, which will stop them living their full potential, which equals evil, life in reverse. Totally, totally. And no one needs negative H3O2. I would disagree. All the negative in my life has helped me become positive. So right away, you can't tell anyone, like the, those statements that no one needs, everyone needs, we all need, everyone should do this. And like, come on, you know, really. Put you know, I in front of it. <laughs> yeah. Instead I've of people even, and everyone, just I. I read I. books by a guy named Hilton Hotema that I picked up when I was with, uh, you know, a friend of ours, you know, Daryl, when we were together in Florida, Campbell and I, basically said, you don't need to eat. According to him, you know, we've, we've died, 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 died rest to oh, the point where we eat food and we are originally breatharians i don't know if that's true or not but that's his opinion and i see how that could be possible and so what really that comes down to is you can't even say everyone needs food right you everyone needs to die or everyone needs to have children or everyone needs to not have children right everyone needs to do what they feel is right for themselves and everyone will get the responses from their actions or inactions that they deserve because you deserve everything you get this world from, and that's why I say it's not a sin, this world is built beautifully. It really gives everyone the opportunity to get and to see how they're acting back in their face immediately if you pay attention. And that can, like the harder the challenge, the bigger the success. This place is horrible in so many ways. I would agree with that in my opinion. But from that, if it had been any better, I'd be stuck with 87 ungrateful children as an old man, you know, mm -hmm. sitting on a beach wondering what I did with my life instead of, you know, I've been pushed at every every moment of my life towards getting better, stronger, and 
discovering different ways to be alive because I've been so challenged. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, better before and after it again. Who wants to move back to 2019? Like, seriously, who would go back to 2019? Like, no way in the world I would even consider that. But yeah. what, what are most people going to say? Oh, the last four years were so horrible. They were so bad. All this stuff, all this oppression. Oh, my God, the government, blah, blah, blah. But what is the result of that? The result, a lot of people, they've woken up, right? That they've gained uh, a better clarity, right? More vision. They've made better decisions. They've decided to start living more for themselves and create lifestyles that, uh, uh, you know, um, enhancing and enriching to them and their friends and family rather than these corporate systems. So bad, it, it, you know, that negative bad, you know, and that's all perceived as well. Um, no, they're not bad. But most of the time, they're good. But if you focus on, oh, my God, it was a government and, and they've, you know, done that to everyone's arm and we can't resist and, well, you're the one creating the bad. It's not the, it's not the, the reality because, it, you know, it's, it's easy to find two people that were at the same event or had the same experience. One sort is extremely positive. One is extremely negative. Both their lives get changed and affected. One goes down, one goes up but it was the same event. It's yeah. how you take it, right? So if you're going to be focused on the negative, then everything, everything that comes into your life is going to be tainted. You're going to see the negatives in it. But yeah. it's you. It's me. It's Lorenzo. It's, it's no one outside of you or us. And all we can do is, pay, It's like I said, it's the Taurus, right? We have experiences. We take them inside. We Through that, we think about them, and that creates an action, which is putting it into the outside world. Then we get feedback of above. The cycle. You know, as an example, with Kerry French going, what's that background noise? It's horrible. They're cacadias oh, or semis. Cicadias, you know? yes, and for me, it's beautiful. Right? I love those. Back like I hear them in, in my summers in Asia here, and they remind me of warm times and flowers and summers, and I go out and listen to them. And I enjoy the fact they get so loud here, you can't even talk to the person beside you sometimes. Oh, they, and, these and, ones yeah. are ridiculously and, loud. Yeah, yeah and, and I'm just here for the cicadia, someone said. So there you go, right? We're all Dry having the same experience. Right away, <laughs> right away, someone's saying it's horrible, and I think it's wonderful. So who is hmm. true? You know, who, who, you know, there is no it's, truth. <laughs> there is no good and bad, but thinking makes it so. Like, this is the thing. You're the only one living your life. That's why, you know, Lorenzo and I often say, you know, we don't have the answers for you. You have them. You know, all we can do, all the best we can do is is hopefully give some information that will make you think a different thought and ask a different question. And that's that's all we can do. Everything else is up to you. We can't change anyone. We don't profess to be able to change anyone, but we can change ourselves. And we, we can, you know, that's our experience. And then we can put some information out into the, the realm about that, right, and get feedback. And people seem to like what we do, so... We're doing it. <laughs> it. It's a good way, JT. Perspective, attitude, experience. Exactly. You know, I have good feelings from cicadias or semi, as they call them here in Japan, S-E-M-I, semis. But, you know, that's that's the nice. Japanese version of them. And I love them because they give me a feeling of, of warm, beautiful summer days, relaxing. And I didn't have that growing up. So maybe you had too much of that growing up. And the opposite is true for you. But, you know, why are you where you are? Why are you having that experience? You know, why... Are you even here discussing this with us right now? And together, you know, sounds like someone with a rattle. Yeah, it really does, you know. And and I, I find and they only live for a week. That's the other thing about the semis here. It's like that's something wow. they stay in the ground for years. They fly around for a week or two and then they die again, or supposedly go back in the ground. And so watching their life and hearing about their experience taught me how to be alive in the moment, right? So again, depends what you've learned from is it a noise that annoys you, or if you watch their life cycle, their actions. And what have you learned from watching the actions of these insects? And how have they brought me to who I am by seeing life is short. If you live for 200 years, it's not that long. So what are you going to do to make yourself better today without blaming anyone in their big butts? Indeed. And um, good luck, Brian. Hope everything goes well with your operations. Um, I feel we're all sending our, our love to you. But yeah, um, a week. These cicadas have been going for like two months, man. But they come up every seven years and then they just go mad for about three months, I think, and then they disappear. But, but I mean, it, this is the thing, right? Like, if, if something annoys you enough for you to, to make statements, why? Like, it, nothing outside of you can change that. So, so why put it out there and, 
that that thought is for you to go, hmm, why is that annoying? Why is that grating on me? What What's there? Because there's something mm-hmm. there. It's like getting triggered. You know, people get triggered and they, ah, it's your fault. It's your... No, no, that's the universe telling you there's something there. You need to look inside. So, you know, I, I, I always get amazed by some of these comments. Like, like, like people just say the randomest things. And, and it's like, you're not listening to anything we say. we've just said and you've just tried to start another conversation. So to me, what that's saying is you, whatever you need to deal with in your mind, it, it's stopping you hear what we say. Yeah, and, and you're sure. focusing on these other things that we're talking and you're focusing on the cicadas because your your mind is not letting you allow, not allowing you to listen to what we're saying because why? Because then you're going to have to deal with it. It's going to bring up the monsters and, and, and you know, the, the evil. And again, evil... It's inside you. And I'm not saying you're bad and you're evil. I'm, evil is the opposite to live. If you're holding yourself back from living your fullest mm. life, you're being evil to yourself, right? Yep. And it's only you. No one else can jump into your mind and change your thoughts. No one can come along. You know, we, we don't have, you know, these people who, you know, personal trainers who come and wake you up every morning and then they jump into your brain and they make you go and work out. And they make, that doesn't no. exist, guys. Like, there's all these concepts that people live by but they're based on nothing so so that's a a big thing is get real like because if you're not real then you're not living your life right you're doing the opposite so yeah you think if you think you're living in a sim then that's your experience you're living in a simulation maybe you're having a simulated life and i would say anybody that thinks they're living in a simulation is probably not following their own guts their own intuition their own will because once you do you realize it's not a simulation. It's you making a life that's, you know, that that is your life. You know, and if you have a life that's a simulation, one day you're going to die. You're going to go, why am I here? Did you like, did you come here and did you get this consciousness? Did your parents go through all the effort to make you and to raise you? And even if you had bad parents, you know, a lot of effort still goes into getting you from, you know, day dot, as Campbell had said, or first breath to 40 years later. A lot of effort's gone into bringing you here. And how rude, in my opinion, to not live your life to your highest level. To not live your life to the highest you can be by giving it away and saying, oh, it's just a simulation. Nothing I have to do. I can just sit back. Nothing is real. You know, nothing means anything. Nothing I can do. And Mr. One to One, if you're in a simulation, again, I don't think you're real simply because you said you're in a simulation. So that would mean you're probably not a real person, which is understandable because you're probably an AI bot or something of that nature. Just my guess. I could be wrong. Every time I judge someone, I still get a lot of poo on my face. So I could be 100% wrong about you, Mr. One to One. But, you know, I get the feeling that at the very least, because you still haven't said anything direct about yourself, you still keep talking about the outside. Maybe you are a sim living in a simulation. And good luck with that, I guess. Hmm. But, I mean, again, it's what's 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 empowering to you? What's going to help you live, you know, have the best experience down here? You know, if, if it's a sim, it, who knows, right? Um, like I said, everything's energy, but we definitely don't know what the sim is if it is but if if you're in a sim and it's like well it's a simulation that means i can change things i can create what i want i can affect my world well i'd go with that but if it's i'm in a sim it's a prison planet we're just going to get recycled you know we can't do well that's disempowering so it's it's like again nothing is good or bad but thinking makes it so it's our perspective on it so um you know i just mentioned it again like what are your results what are your results do do your thought patterns are they leading you forward into better experiences a better life more growth or are they taking you the other way because isn't that what really should be right or wrong like there's all this discussion and and you know conflict over what is right and wrong but when you really get down to it ultimately right and wrong is different for everyone because what's right and wrong is what's making your life better or worse how are you helping more? How are you not helping more? How are you learning more? How are you not learning more? How are you expanding more? How are you not expanding? Like, that's all that really matters. It's a perspective because you're never going to be able to prove to 8 billion people that your perspective is correct. So, so forget it. Just just live your perspective and, and see, is this taking me to where I want to go? Because that's really the only right or wrong you know, truth or lie that we need to worry about, what we can affect. 
that's it. You know, figure it out for yourself. Let's see what works for you. Alcohol is wrong. You know, all of these statements, well, I still haven't found but, too many people, you know. See, alcohol is wrong until you're in a desert with a cup that needs to be disinfected and someone has exactly. a hot cup. Yeah. So, again, ah. don't, don't, don't judge everything. You know, yeah, yeah. There's always a good and all the bad. You know, I, I've used alcohol to disinfect quite a bit, and I've been happy to have a, you know, a, a bottle of whatever that I don't drink to use. As Campbell said, maybe you'll need to start a fire one day. You know, you know, beer is good. I've had some experiences where beer's been good. I've had some experiences where beer's been bad. It really, really, really just, you know, really just depends. A little plug, um, links below. Uh, if you are looking for anything that maybe changed some of the, the thoughts that you can't get rid of. In your mind, um, flower essences, uncut flower essences, and they are actually tinctured in alcohol. But it, this is what heals. This is healing people. People are changing their lives for the better by taking this, but alcohol is involved. So, you know, again, nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so, our perspective. That's it. You know, figure it out for yourself. You can do it for yourself. Check out newogar.ca. Check out Autodidactic. You know, a lot of the flower essences we're sharing, we've used so we can say on our own experiences, they've helped me see parts of myself that I wasn't aware needed to be looked at. I wasn't healed. I helped myself by healing myself, but I had to see sometimes because I was missing bits and pieces I needed to work on and look at and see. I needed to see where I was wrong, where I wasn't being true to myself, where I was living the opposite of my life, where I was living in the evil of my own shadows simply by not understanding how I needed to turn some bits around and start to live, you know, from my own highest awareness of my own highest self. There you go. So if you want to see bits of yourself you've never seen before, click the link below. <laughs> It'll be an interesting time. <laughs> I understand. Um, all right. So, yes, thank you all for being here. Uh, 175 of you still here. Thanks, of course, to um, all the mods, Hippie, Terry. Um, we do appreciate you. And thank you all for your input. And, you know, obviously, you know, we, we comment on them. This is nothing personal. If, if, it, if you take it personally, that's in you guys. Again, that's something you need to deal with. So bring everything back to you and, and, and check out your results, man. If you're getting bad results, do something different. Yeah. Uh -huh. And if anybody has any questions or suggestions, send them along. All intelligent, loving contributions are welcome. Indeed, indeed. Think before you type. So we will be back uh, next Friday with another one. We're having a chat during the week with Dale Holmes. So that'll be out uh, in the next week. AI, a bit of chat on AI and what's going on. So thank you all for spending some time with us. We appreciate you all. Have an amazing day. And we will talk to you all on the next upload. Bye, everyone. Wow. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you. Stepping it up, taking a chance, risking it all. We're going crazy, stepping it up.